everyone. So we are back again with the second uh, episode. So today, uh, we will, uh, Dada is going to continue the last topic which we were talking about, so the role of martial arts in life. Now we are going to talk about how we are going to develop in martial arts or how we are going to use martial arts uh, as a part of our life. So I will take it ahead, uh, like let Dada take it ahead from here. So now what happens is that we, or uh, most of the people, take it up martial arts for a time being or to reduce weight or get some fitness or, or they have a sense that if they learn martial arts then they can uh, save themselves or defend themselves in times of difficulty. So, uh, and then we get ideas about martial arts because we see many movies and how one man is fighting against 10 people mm -hmm. or 4 people or some. Some are more realistic than others. Mm -hmm. But most of this, what you see in movies, is just a drama, choreographed. And it never happens like that. First of all, no fights last that long. And uh, you can be certain that if you have three, four people accosting you, you're going to lose. You're not going to make it. Unless the people who are accosting you are stupid and their intent is maybe, maybe not, then you might be able to get away with it. But even people who are not trained, if they want to attack you, a group of people, five, six people, you have no chance. No matter how many years you learn karate, how many years you do some technique or the other, you have no chance. Plus, one must realize that if you had stood some chance when you are 20 years old or 30 years old, I am now completing 77. Come on. I better not have some wrong ideas in my head. I don't stand much chance. Then how to take care of yourself? So, number one is that you never stop practicing. If the people are saying, oh, I did karate, I got black belt, 10 years ago, and then now, of course, you know, I, uh, I'm busy, I'm doing some jobs here and there, and I, I'm not practicing. Uh, but I still can take care of myself. This is just your idea that you can take care of yourself because you are looking into mirror and looking at your arms and saying, and saying, oh, I can take care of myself. You cannot. So, Almost all the martial arts have been designed. Uh, subsections of those also have been designed by great martial artists, great gurus. And I cannot turn around and say one is better than other or one is lesser than others. What matters is how long you are doing it. Whether you are practicing it daily, whether you are continuing with it all your life, if you are going to do it for two years, four years, ten years, no good. You must continue in it forever till the day you die. Then there is a possibility of 
you reaching somewhere. I have a memory. I was training in Philippines with Grandmaster Nenit Tortal. And it used to be three sessions a day, two and a half hours in the morning, two and a half hours in the afternoon, and two and a half hours in the evening. Then at night, there would be another Aikido master would come and take another two and a half hours. So I had a total of 10 hours a day. Now, this training was on one on one, one on one basis. And I had hired in Manila, Makati, Manila. Uh, 800 square feet of uh, air condition hall for my training alone. And I didn't know the master beforehand, but I had practiced uh, this art for eight years before I went to him. And uh, what happened is I was thinking that I should ask him whether I can have a video man standing by and record entire training because I was paying him very heavily. But I thought that he might not approve. So I had not asked him. After about one week of training, I realized that whatever I was learning in the morning I couldn't remember it in the afternoon because he was showing so many ways, so many techniques and so many movements that I started getting muddled up in the head and I couldn't remember anything. So after seven days, we are having lunch and I asked the master, I said, master, I can't remember what you taught me in the morning just a few hours ago. Would you allow me to engage a video uh, photographer and record what I am training under you? And he said, yes, if you want it, you can go and record, no problem. And, but he said, listen, Whatever I'm teaching you is for forgetting, not for remembering. He said, you are doing very well. You go home and you keep on practicing any way you like, but stay at it. He said, I cannot tell you whether it will be after 10 days or 20 days or one month or one year. A day will come when you will suddenly understand. Keep on practicing daily. That understanding came one fine day, two years after that. And it stays with you. It's like opening up your eyes. And I was 58 years old at that time. Because when I went for training, I was 56. So this part, awakening of your senses, awakening of your body, if you are not at it for that long, for that to happen, then no matter how much time you spend on it, you don't reach there. And even after you get awakened, even after that, you have to keep on at it. You can't say, I've reached, and no need to do anything for it. Your brain must be all the time at it. Now, in Philippines, 
when I was there with him, sometimes he would pair me off against some of his younger students. And I say, and he would say, okay, take a stick and fight. And of course, we are not wearing any gear to protect ourselves. And we had no intention of hurting the other person. But the hits used to be hard. Now, I was carrying either Kamagong, which is a very heavy stick, or Indian Lucky cut into smaller pieces, which is also very heavy. And because I had no idea that they were fighting with lighter sticks, Ratan, which is also very hard and you can fight and that is also dangerous, as dangerous, any stick is dangerous. And all the Filipinos there, they were using only Ratan. So they could do fancy movements and they were super fast. So before I could give one hit, they would come out with two, three hits. But twice during these days of training there, it so happened that when I hit and they try to counter with Ratan, Because my hit was very hard and the weight behind heavy stick was harder still. Whenever they tried to stop it, instead of stopping, they got hurt because their own stick came back and hit them. And there used to be blood spattered evening. And I was in a foreign country and somebody local gets hurt like that. It doesn't matter if it's my mistake or his mistake. But still a local man is hurt. Um, luckily, they were all master student and nobody complained. And the master, uh, I was very apologetic. But the master said, no, no, nothing wrong with you. I've been telling them to use heavy sticks. And they go for these fancy stick, light sticks. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lesson there. And ever since, last 20 years, me and my students, we are using heavy sticks. Then, traditional gurus, traditional masters, they are learning these arts from the time they are very young mm. and they are fantastic mm. and they do everything right but they cannot explain to you it is for you to understand that's where we are coming from technical background we are coming from different ways of mm -hmm. life we have so, different education so our brain works differently mm -hmm. uh, we want to reason out, we want to think why, we are asking question why, mm -hmm. how, mm -hmm. and that's a plus point. Unfortunately, in Philippines, as well as in India, uh, most of the people who are going for martial arts are the ones who are not into white polar jokes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. Uh, this must change. Because uh, this kind of background helps in anywhere you go in life. So, when I saw that the heavy stick is hitting, I saw many, 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 I spent a lot of money on video training uh, possibilities which are available of great gurus. And I realized that whenever they were hitting, 
except for top dog Eric Knauss. Nobody talked about power heating. I said what he is talking about is right. You must have power heating. Now the power heating cannot come if you do not work out in a particular manner. This is why the way we are teaching Arnis Eskrima here, I introduce a long stick which is uh, like a jo. Uh, it's not a bow. It's not lati. Lati must come up to your temple. Yes. Bow is always six feet. But we are taking jo. Jo is short stick, uh, but it's long stick. Now, uh, we're never taking long stick. We're not carrying a long stick anywhere with us. You can't carry it in a car. You can't carry it anywhere. So you cannot fight with it. Uh, my idea about this longer stick for training is not about fighting with it. Though we can fight with it. Longer the stick, you can fight with it. And all my students can fight it. At least the senior ones. But the idea is not fighting with it. Advantage of that is you, when you use a longer stick for fighting, because the weight of the stick is double that of the short stick, you have to use full body. That means for each strike, entire body must move. It's not just hand hitting it with a shoulder power mm -hmm. and a hand power. Mm -hmm. The entire body must work with a long stick. Mm -hmm. You wow. cannot wield long stick without putting the body weight up behind it. Mm -hmm. So once or twice a week, we are practicing with the long stick. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of that is that when my students and I myself also, when I'm holding a short stick, I fight it as if it's a long stick. So the power used with a short stick, naturally, at any time, at any angle, is, more. is much more than even the people in the Philippines using it. Two years ago, I went to Philippines to Cebu City. And almost every day I was sitting with Jose Pares and some other groups. They were nice enough for me to let, them, let me watch them. Watch their training sessions. They didn't charge me anything, though I was willing to pay. Perhaps I think they made some allowance for my age <laughs> and they didn't charge me. Yeah, and you're good looking. <laughs> no, I used to sometimes in the evening take them out for a dinner yeah. and a drink or something like that. In, in but it, they were very nice. Yeah. And I was just watching and I was comparing as to what am I doing in my stu studio, yeah. in my dojo. Yeah. What am I teaching? My boys, am I on the right path? Because that's what the original yeah, origin. armies yes. is. And I found that even their teachers, they were not using heavy sticks. Mm. They were fast, they were fit, mm. they were everything. But their hits just cannot be the same hit that my students can give. So, those uh, 17, 18 days that I spent in the Philippines, I learned a lot. And I came out with conviction that me and the students who are following me are on the right path. 
Now I want to talk to you about one more aspect. When you are into this kind of fighting, stick is an impact weapon, but it moves in the same way as a sword would move. And our senior students, they are doing it with real sharp blades. Where they don't use it as an impact weapon, they use it as a in the movement cutting movements. Slicing. Slicing. Slicing movements. One thing all my students realize that the fight or attack can not last more than two, three minutes. You expend so much energy, continuous two, three minutes is too much. You need a relief, somebody else coming and relieving you. Yes. Two, three minutes is maximum that you can make an attack. Yeah, there is a lot of fun, like your adrenaline rush, you're spending a lot of energy. You need a lot, a lot, and a lot of this thing. I think if, if you don't do anything else and only do this, maybe you can extend three minutes to six minutes, but that's it. Yes. Yes. You can't fight for one hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes. It's impossible. Yes. It's physically impossible. It is so much that you are putting in. Yes. So that realization comes to everybody. And this realization is important because you need to, first of all, don't get into a fight. Yes. Avoid fight. If there is altercation, say you are right, I'm wrong. I'm sorry, even if you are not in the wrong, take a step back and walk away. Mm -hmm. Because my worry is because of my training and if I have a stick, small or big, doesn't matter what size. For example, here you have a pen. This pen is a heavy duty tactical pen. If I hold it like this, this is a stick. I don't need any other special training. With this I can fight. This is a pen and you will have something like this. It's wooden thing, it can cannot be, it's a metal detector. Yeah. I can hold it like this. For somebody, if the police sees it, I'll say this is something to do with my religion. Mm -hmm. But I have it in the hand, I can fight with the person who has a knife in the hand. Mm -hmm. And he is not expecting. Mm -hmm. I can not only take care of myself, maybe I kill him with this mm -hmm. wooden thing. Anyway, this young man is over here. I took it out today. I said, here is a present for you. You keep it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you keep it. Practice it at home. Thank you. What I wanted to tell you is this is also a stick. Yes. This is a stick. I have another small one over here somewhere. Look at this. This I got from Philippines. Looks like this. This is a stick. It's force multiplier. People will have difficulty fighting me if I have this in the hand. Doesn't matter if they have a knife. So, what does this mean? You need not have weapon as weapon. This my mobile phone has got a strong cover. This is a stick. Yes. Come on, time comes, I'm going to smash somebody with this. Anything can become a weapon in your hand. Yes. But for that, you have to practice weapons, big or small. Yes. You have to practice weapon, and you have to all the time start thinking about the angles and the distances. Angles, distances, movements. That's where the fight is. It's not about strength. And 
as you grow old, you're going to lose your stamina. So I want to finish the fight in the shortest possible time. If it's three, four people also, I have to choose one weak link somewhere. Attack him and try to finish fight. Take one by one. Well, I don't have the stamina. So I have to make sure that every hit of mine counts. And I commit myself. Whether I should hit or not. Whether the other person will get hurt or not. Don't enter into fight if you're not going to fight. <laughs> Better accept defeat and walk away. But if you've decided that you're going to make a stand, then make a stand. And when you are making a stand, you must have in your hand something which your body recognizes. Unfortunately, you land up in something and have nothing that I recognize I might just pick up anything and fight mm. just to save myself. But that is not something which I am happy about. So if you have something like this or a pen like this, Keep the same pen with you all the time. Use it, keep it in the hand all the time. Don't have something fancy stick on the rack somewhere to show others and practice with some other stick. You have the same stick practicing all the time. So you hold that stick in the hand or any weapon that you are using. You are so much used to it, it becomes a part of your but it becomes a part of your body. That weapon recognizes you, no matter how simple it is, but the weapon recognizes you and your body recognizes it as an extension of your own body, not that you are holding some foreign thing in your hand. This is something which is not only physical but mental. I want to narrate an incident that took place in Santan, Indonesia. I arrived at this port 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And the port said to me, Captain, you have to be at anchor in an anchorage for at least 12, 14, 16 hours mm. because we can only start loading tomorrow 10 o'clock in the yes. morning. Yeah. So you stay at anchor, in an anchorage. So I came in and I anchored and the port said to me, there are robbers and pirates in this area. So keep a good watch. Take all the precautions. So we have standard procedures. So we had searchlights. We had high pressure water hoses pouring out water. All pumps on. I had uh, two teams of seamen to each with walkie-talkies, uh, with torches, walking around on the deck mm. all the time. I had the officer on the watch, watching. There are standard procedures as to how to take care of yourself. And to make sure that everything goes well, I myself personally came on the bridge at 8 o'clock in the evening and I stayed on the bridge monitoring if the captain himself is there or 
everybody is on their toes. Mm. Yes. And uh, everything went well till four o'clock in the morning. The chief officer, who is second in command, came on the watch. And I said to the chief officer, right, now I'm going down. Because it's four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. Another one and a half, two hours was going to be daylight. And mostly these pirates or thieves, robbers, don't come after the day breaks. It's only nighttime operation. So I went down to my room and I had a shower and it was around quarter to five I, that I was about to get into the bed and the chief officer called me and said, Captain, some pirates have already boarded and I can see them on the forecastle deck. Well, this is a big ship like this, 100,000 ton plus, so that is good seven, 800 feet away from us. So I said, ring the emergency alarm, wake up everybody, have the emergency party ready on the starboard side, starboard quarter, but don't move forward till the time I come. My chief officer was a very strong man, Croatian, uh, a fine young man, uh, fearless, and I was afraid that he might try to make a move and he might get killed because these pirates, they either have guns, or, but mostly not guns, but choppers, machetes, something of this kind. And that is super dangerous mm. and that he can get hurt. So I said, don't make a move till the time I come down personally. And I of course moved fast. I had nice non-slip shoes and I was feeling very fit. And this is 2000, so I'm 56 years old. And just two months before that, I had got my, a pair of Sai, which is a heavy steel weapon. And my pair of Sai is very specially made for my hand. And they, they're very well balanced. And I was practicing daily with it. So I said, what should I take? And I said, right, let's take Sai. So I took two nice sides in the hand and I started running down the staircases to come down to the main deck. Mm. As I reached the main deck, only two steps left and my body froze. I couldn't take a single step forward. I tried to move and the body and not move. I said, my God, I'm delaying the entire operation. I just told, I'm almost there. And now I'm, I'm froze. I froze completely. And I said, what is this? This is some inner fear. Body knows that you are going to do something where you're going to die. Mm. Something wrong. With you. Something is seriously wrong. Mm. A weapon in the hand is telling my body that I'm not for you. Mm. Yes, sir. I didn't know for a moment. I didn't know how to face this. And if I stand like this, like a statue, uh, people are going to realize that it's out of fear. It was fear. Right. So I said, what should I do now? And another thought came in my mind. Hey, come on. You training with this size only for three months. 
go back, try to pick up your stick. And I rushed back again four floors, kept the size on the sofa and picked up my stick, single stick, not even two sticks, single stick. And I came rushing down again. This time the body did not freeze because I was with my natural stick. If I have to die there, I die happily with this stick in the hand. It's part of the body. It's part of my body, the weight, the movement, everything natural. I came down, I told my chief officer, I said, Chief, I need 10 feet behind me free. Mm. to move. Mm. So you follow me with the emergency party, which is about 10 people. Mm. Don't rush. Don't go ahead of me. Mm. Just stay 10 feet behind me. Mm. And we approach them. Let's see what happens. Mm. So we walked at a brisk pace. I was totally calm within. As we came closer, we realized that there were four people and they were stealing our mooring ropes. Mm. Nylon mooring ropes are extremely expensive. Mm. They had a boat down below and they were operating our winch and a large rope was being lowered into the boat. Mm. It's very expensive. It's twenty thirty thousand dollars worth. Yes, sir. So when they saw us coming, two of them, they took machetes out and came to stop us. Mm. And the other two kept on lowering the... Mm. I saw them coming and standing in front of me, 20, 30 feet away with machetes in the hand. Mm. And I didn't lose a heartbeat. Mm. My stride was the same, walk was the same. I was completely relaxed. I, I was so much at ease with my stick. And because I walked very calmly at the same rate, with a purpose in mind, mm. because as I approach, I am going to attack with my stick. Mm that all my emergency party team also walked in the same manner because they see me. Okay. They also see the uh, machetes, but they see me walking in the same manner. And in any way, they are 10 feet behind me. Mm -hmm. They walked in the same manner. As I came 10 feet away, all four of these people, they jumped into the boat. Mm. Actually, they jumped into the water mm. and climbed on onto the boat. All four of them. And uh, there were some four or five people in the boat. They cut the rope and we lost three-fourths of our... Mm. Every rope is 220 meters long mm. by design. Mm. So we lost three-fourths of the rope. But the armed pirates ran away. Mm. Why? Because they see body language. body language, they see purpose, and they know that they have machetes in the hand and there are two of them. Mm. And there, here is a man coming peacefully uh, with intent of attack, mm. with a stick in the hand. Mm. They realize that they will lose. Mm. I was very happy. So this is a terrific win, which I'm telling you after so many years, mm. 20 years back this is. Yes. Right? And the win does not mean ha, who, somebody got hurt and you killed somebody or you hit somebody and you did this and that, mm. nothing. Nothing happened. They took a step back and they ran. Mm. That's the way. This is very satisfactory. 
and I wish all of you who are listening to this realize what the real fight is. It is here. It is that the body and the mind and the weapon that you are used to is one. And you are ready for the consequences. This is how you remove. Life is about removing fear from your mind. Life is about breathing. Life is about being natural in whatever you do. So with this incident, we will stop today. And anybody who wants to enrich themselves in life, think about this. This is happiness. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. So we will close the session today. Yes. And we will continue with this topic ahead. I think we will be learning much more uh, yes. with all your experience and yes. the, 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 you have traveled almost every part of the world. Yes. So and you have also trained in US as well. So US Canada. So that yeah. experience also we would like yes. to see. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah. Nice one.